Yeah. All right, I'm here with Victoria. Let me know, folks, if you're joining, let me know in the chat. You should just see a little automate all the things. We're live on Twitch. Right here, Brad. Good to see you. I saw your message around base design. Yeah. How, what time is it for you, Brad? Is it like 9 a.m.? 9 a.m., I'm guessing. Tell me it's not like 6 a.m. All right. Evening. 8 a.m.? Okay, that's good. Is this like a little bit of a stream before you get to work? That's awesome. All right. Hey, Anne. How are you? Welcome. I'm so excited. This is so much fun. Uh, you want to kick this off, Victoria? Let's do this. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to do, there's going to be like a 20 second stream intro. And then we're going to kick this off. Cool. <laughs> this is work. All right, let's do it. Right. Hey, Victoria. Hi, Karen. How are you? Yeah, I'm. I'm so excited. This is such a big day. I've got my first ever guest on Automate All the Things. We're moving channels. We're we're changing things. We've got folks in the in the chat, and we've got you. Um, I you know I, so yeah. I would love maybe just to start with an intro. Tell us, Victoria, who you are, and then I'll kind of talk to who you are for me and how we, how we started at Airtable, but give us a quick intro to everyone joining. Yeah, hi guys, really excited to be here and, and chat with y'all about one of my favorite things, Airtable. Um, it's, I think we all have mutual interests. Um, I'm a customer success manager at Airtable uh, and uh, work with our enterprise clients every day to train them, to uh, optimize their bases, uh, to get them using Airtable um, in the in the best ways, and then kind of like, you know, get, get to see their aha moments every day, which is a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, in the product uh, with our with our customers, seeing how um, people have really transformed Airtable made it super super powerful. So lots of fun there. So maybe maybe uh, you know I think uh, so s some background maybe between yourself and myself. Victoria was my mentor. Uh, is my mentor, I guess, and was my mentor when I joined Airtable. Um, and interesting, was was also the first person I met when I interviewed at Airtable and re very distinctively remember uh, that chat in the office back in the days when we still went to an office. And so yeah. uh, I, I think I can I can safely say that wouldn't be here and streaming and, and doing all this cool Airtable stuff if it wasn't for you. So, uh, And yeah, I'm so excited that you're kind of the first guest on Automate All the Things. Thanks. I'm really excited. Uh, I remember. I remember that conversation too. And when you were like, "Oh yeah, I have a course on Udemy," I was like, "Wait, what? We need to hire this person <laughs> immediately." Um, and while I might have been your mentor at Airtable, the company, definitely not your mentor at Airtable, the product. You are um, extremely knowledgeable and a lot of fun, yeah. and, and so cool to see what you build it and, and work with, um, especially when it comes to you know uh, the the stuff you've done with the Parabola and Webflow. So much fun. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, and I just want to acknowledge there's so many people in the chat. When I'm looking to the right, this is like me looking at the chat, and I will move it eventually. But uh, we've got Tracy, Damiano, Colleen, Anne, who will be kind of doing the use case today. Uh, uh, awesome. uh, Alberto, Ro, I guess. Sorry if I'm just tell me, like, oh, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Welcome. This is so exciting. So many folks in the chat. Uh, Very cool. And so, yeah, just a little more about Victoria before we kind of jump in. So Victoria is who you go to when you want to ask questions around scripts, base design, 
And uh, just, just I think, you know, probably you're one of the people who both understands what the problems in Airtable are and what kind of what that base structure should be. I'd love for maybe before we jump into the live example of base building, talk a little bit about your process of like, how do you even come and think about base design? What are the questions you ask before you even jump into uh, designing the base? So I'd love to just give yeah. some of your insight to everyone joining. I'll give you a personal answer and a professional answer. So <laughs> personal answer, I like messing around with stuff. So, I mean, if it's not a high stakes project, I'll just like go in and press the buttons and like see some things. And one thing that I really liked about Airtable when I first started using the product before I started working um, for Airtable was um, I just like played around with it and, and always felt like I could never back myself into a corner with a build. I could always say like, okay, wow, I understand how I can structure that a little bit better. And then um, Airtable makes it very easy for you to just turn around and, and make something a little bit different. Um, so. I think that's also a really great way how to learn how to use the product too, because you learn how to use all its edges or you learn like what something's good for and what something's not. Uh, so personally, I just tinker with stuff and press buttons. Uh, professionally, I <laughs> definitely kind of ask people, <laughs> um, you know, what is it that you want to track or like, what is it that's really important for you? What are the, what is the information that you're looking for and how is it related to each other? Um, and that's a pretty weird question to ask people. Uh, so. Uh, that's like the core of what I'm trying to get at. But usually, you know, you'll just ask, like, take me through your process. You know, what do you begin with? Where does it all start? Um, how does it move from beginning, nascent, you know, raw to refined? Um, and who are all the people that touch it? How do they touch it? When do they need to? What do they need to know? Um, and uh, how how do you, how do you need to see the information or like you know what are some what are some sticky points that you have there? And usually through that conversation, and it's very much a conversation. Um, it's really hard to have someone say this is my data structure and this is how I like you know, uh, well, you know. Uh, yeah. But um, it's it's very much like from the conversation you could kind of pick out okay projects is the biggest bucket or yeah and then you kind of like you make buckets in your head of like what are the objects that these people are tracking and, and, and what's the bigger encircling one and then what are the kind of like the smaller nested ones um and you kind of kind of build the uh, a little a little schema in your head or like a little kind of like connection point uh that's how i start thinking about workflows but honestly you know my advice is is just don't be afraid just like mess around with Airtable and see what happens uh because like the more you do it the more you'll understand it and then you'll say like oh wow i can you can be a lot more creative with it basically yeah uh, I'd love to know in the chat, like we're going to go through an example with Anne. Uh, so Anne, if you want to kind of share a little bit more around your example, uh, but everyone just kind of tell me what it is you're building in Airtable, whether it's CRM or whatever. And, and again, we're just going to kind of make sure that everyone leaves here with some value. Uh, uh, hey, Penny, good to see you. Uh, uh, so, so, so yeah. And, and I'd love to, before we jump in, because I know I'm like, I'm like excited to go build this base because I've seen it and it's frustrating to me it's base structure and I know I showed it to you and you're probably equally a little bit like, okay, we need to rebuild this base. Uh, uh, um, so I'd love to know, like, what is the, what do you think is the, the biggest challenge for folks when they're kind of thinking of their process and then mapping it to their base structure? Is it, they don't know what their process is. They don't know what the Airtable terminology is a mix of both. Like, what do you think is like that big hurdle for folks when they're like, okay, how do I do this in Airtable? Yeah, I would say the two biggest, that's a really good question. The two biggest ones are separating your process from Airtable or whatever tool you use. So mm -hmm. I want to know what is like the ultimate goal? And then like, what are the inputs? And what are the outputs? Like, don't, don't worry about what tool you're using right now um, or how it gets there. But like, you know, what do you need to be informed about? And what do you need to do with that information um, to uh, ultimately create a product or create something out of it? Um, and then uh, on the other side, I think the biggest thing is, um, let's say like how, how, understanding how data relates to each other reciprocally and like feeling comfortable within it um, and knowing that like, um, knowing that it's like, it's like a, a big mental shift and, a, and a, a, a shift that you have to shift from, from spreadsheets, which was a lot of what we all learned on, um, but like just not like kind of knowing that's, that it's a lot to learn, but I'm like kind of like not worrying about that because like the knowledge right. would just come uh, as, as the more you kind of get familiar with the tool. I do wanna, I think a lot of folks 
in the chat come from spreadsheets. So, yeah. and I think that's like, uh, 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 you know, the number one tool out there. I actually think it's like the number one software as a service in the world is like people are just like, yeah, we're going to build a spreadsheet. Like spreadsheets are just the default. So, you know, coming back to like, okay, so folks don't necessarily know their process and they're worried and they're always like thinking of like, okay, how do I translate this to Airtable? You're saying don't do that. But what do you, just like before we jump in, last question I promise is like, what is the one thing you would say coming from a spreadsheet like that people struggle with thinking in Airtable? Yeah. Um, definitely um, connecting information to each other. And like, uh, it, it definitely is, and, and realizing so that they're able to do that and not realizing that how that kind of waterfalls down to how you have that, like the most optimal way to structure your data to get the, excuse me, um, get the, the ideal outcome out of it or take the, the most advantage out of a database. So, um, you know, a lot of spreadsheets. I mean, like I, I definitely came from spreadsheets and one thing I was doing was like creating a weekly uh, pipeline report for my team. And it was, I had to do so much BBA wizardry um, that was solved instantly with a database and with um, Airtable's views. And it was like, I had, I taught myself VBA, uh, I remember staying in my office until like well past 1 a.m., um, banging my head against the wall. And I found Airtable and was able to recreate what I had spent more than 100 hours on in around two hours. Um, so I think <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so it's like um, realizing that like the the relational part and getting that, getting that like, yeah, projects really a task. That, that's a very easy concept to grasp, but then mm -hmm. understanding how to structure it um, in order to, um, you know, understand which task belongs to which project and the naming convention and um, how, uh, how you might want to structure your tables and why uh, you can't have a table full of uh, blank records so that you can, uh, you know, have a better visualization of, of, uh, a, a, or a kind of copy of a, a mirror image of a spreadsheet that you might already have. Uh, I think right. that that's definitely a difficulty, but then once you're able to get it, or like you just get it and like, you don't need to understand schemas uh, or um, many to many relationships or anything like that, that comes as you kind of get more into it, like I said before, but um, like just what, like once the, once the light bulb goes on that you kind of like can apply it to other ways that you're working in our table. Totally. All right. Is that helpful? Uh, I got <laughs> no, no, that's great. I think, you know, the, the, um, uh, everyone, you know, we, we have worked with Airtable for so long that a lot of it's intuition to us, right? Like that should be a table. Yeah. This should be a linked record. This should be a lookup. And then those, and so it's sometimes difficult for us to like step back and be like, okay, what is, what is that challenge of someone coming from a spreadsheet? And you just mentioned like, like, um, empty records. And I remember when I first got into Airtable, I was like, oh yeah, like I just want to put some text here and then a date mm -hmm. here. And then I'll just kind of like think of this in Excel, but that's not how Airtable works. And so you've got to kind of understand the structure of it. So I think that's like a really good intro into actually going into the base build. So uh, yeah. um, we've got some like, so two things I want to, I want to see if this works correctly. So this is like a whole new setup. So I got to I got to share, I got to move to the browser like this. So now you should, you Victoria, so bear with me everyone, it's my first time doing this. You Victoria should now see the the base. Everyone, you do, see the base. you do see the base. That's the most important part. People should see you and then everyone joining yeah. should both see the base, myself and Victoria right above me. Let me know, it seems to be working. Uh, hopefully you can still hear us as well. Uh, and you could see the nice new layout. Thank you to Ethan for, for doing this. Uh, and let's talk about Anne. So uh, uh, awesome. Everyone, man, so many people in the chat. This is so great. Uh, um, so everyone seems to be, what do you think of the new layout? So let me know in the chat. This is all new. Wanted to just show you the base and my faces. Uh, um, so, and then I'm, I'm going to bring up Anne's message. So this is this is the the start of all this. Is I went to a Facebook, the Airtable members Facebook group, uh, and then kind of Anne mentioned. So you have that in Slack, Victoria. Uh, so I'm going to read out the use case, right? So Anne is trying to figure out logic and structure to use a base and to manage volunteers. Um, 
And then each project has project-based tasks. Those happen once per project, and then they have participant-based tasks. So some tasks are related to projects, and then you know some of those are related to participants, and each one of those happen once per project. Anne would like to set due dates for the tasks automatically based on the start and end date of the event. We already know that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, so we'll talk through how to not do that, and then we'll talk about how to do that. Um, and then Anne would like to view a list of upcoming tasks by due date and be able to mark tasks complete when they are done. Hasn't been, uh, uh, you know, figure out how to do this. We've got Anne in the chat. Uh, so Anne works with volunteers serving across a number of location and channels. That's interesting. Now mostly online. Uh, used to use a project management software. We won't tell you what you used. To, we won't ask you what you used before. You're on Airtable. You're you're in the good place. Um, and yeah, so wants to be able to track multiple projects. Anne has been gracious enough to share their base with us. And yeah, let's dive into this. So I guess I'm going to hand it off to you, Victoria. Talk to us. What, what is like your first thought? And you know, looking at this base, what is like your first action that you do? Um, my first thought is I'm really excited about this because uh, you've already tackled step one, which is knowing what your process is and knowing what you need to track. Like that is one of the biggest hurdles and you already know it. And it, it seems like it's pretty discreet, discreetly defined um, already. So now uh, what I, I call air, working at Airtable um, is just like one big game of business Tetris. Now we have to put all the blocks together and make them fit uh, versus, you know, going hunting down the blocks uh, to begin with. So uh, I think like you've already tackled step one, which is great. Um, so now uh, step two, when Aaron was describing um, what uh, what the what you need to track, uh, things kind of stuck out in my mind. Of um, I need to track projects, I need to track volunteers, I need to track tasks. Um, so there are three three distinct kind of objects, and I hate saying objects because I think it like really. <laughs> Um, disassociates, uh, you know, the the tangible um, piece or item of what you're tracking from, uh, and and kind of make, turning it into database language. But I, I do also kind of like it because it's a way to say like this is like the category um, or the class uh, that you're tracking, and then every single mm. uh, thing in this table is um, uh, one of that. So one thing I like to do, um, which is what I see here, and I and, and I want to I want to go towards is, um, and Aaron's Aaron's already do it. Like, I want these to be the name of my tables: volunteers, right. tasks, and projects, because those are the objects that I'm tracking. Um, and each uh, line or each record in my table is going to be a singular of that. So one thing I always say is like, to me, the name of your table should always be the plural of what every row in the record is, or if your primary field. Um, whatever the plural of your primary field is. So if we're tracking a mm -hmm. list of volunteers, uh, the primary field is going to be named volunteer. Each record is going to be the name of a volunteer. Um, and then that way your table makes sense to be called volunteers. Uh, same thing with project. Each uh, re record that you're going to be tracking is a project. Uh, so we'll name our primary field project and then our table will be called projects. And so that kind of makes it really clear for anybody who comes into the base to understand what exactly is being tracked here uh, versus um, master task tracker or um, mm -hmm. like project database, uh, kind of clarifying exactly what I can expect to find in each table. Um, so that would be the next thing I think about. Okay. All right. So so let's kind of. Do you want to do them one by one? So I, I have I took the 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 you know I have a volunteer table which it was already in the base. I've renamed yeah. that primary field that first field in the base to volunteer. Do you want to kind of go through this table and understand its structure, maybe restructure this a little bit, and then we can move on to the other yeah. ones? How would you go about this? Um, yeah, let's let's do that. So, okay. excuse me. Um, so here we've got some really good attributes about a volunteer um, or uh, like a people object, right? So right. Um, all people are going to have names, uh, hopefully, uh, and then they'll <laughs> have ways to contact them, uh, whether it's their email. I, yeah. uh, we see we've got uh, their pastor email. So maybe we've got uh, a uh, personal and a professional email or yeah. uh, a, um, so or each first of thing I'm just gonna, this is maybe just me being nitpicky. I'm going to change the email field to be an email field. So oh, just absolutely. always making, yeah. 
making sure that your fields match the field type that you're inputting. And this is just so you can click on. So they've got each two emails. That's a good example, like personal and business, past your name. Now, you know, I, I reading this for me, I'm wondering, you know, is every volunteer a pastor or, you know, is that a subset of the volunteer? So we don't necessarily know that. So yeah. maybe it's a single select. So maybe it's like, uh, 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 you know, uh, um, that pastor. Okay. So each volunteer has a pastor. Is that correct? Anne? so potentially, you know, fake, fake samples, pastor is pastor Smith. Another one is pastor Miller. So oh, awesome. we may need, we may need a, another table or do we need yeah, another okay. table? That's a good question. So this is my favorite, actually, when it comes to Airtable is like, I like to get super basic with my tables and try to make them um, uh, as as simple as possible in terms of what the object is. So right. uh, a lot of people uh, at this point will say, okay, well, I need a table for volunteers and then I need a table for pastors and I might need a table for organizers or team members. Right. And the thing is, is that you're going to be... Uh, capturing emails for everyone, phone numbers for everyone, uh, right. you know, maybe, maybe stats. Uh, and so what you, uh, what I like to do is say, okay, like if, every, if a vol like what are volunteers, pastors and team members? Well, they're all people. Right. Okay. All right, did we lose Victoria or did we lose me? And that way oh, I don't have- Victoria's room. back. Oh. I think we're good. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, it's fine, it's fine. We lost you, we lost, there she is. Okay, she's back. Okay, so okay. what you're saying is you like to think of they're all people. So we're not even, this isn't, table isn't even volunteers. It should almost be yeah. people. That's your kind of Absolutely. recommendation here. Yeah. And how would you then think about these and saying like, we wanna be able to have participant to be tied to this pastor? How would you go about Absolutely. restructuring this table? So the first thing I would do is create a new field that lets me know what type of person this is. Right. So I have a new field and I usually be a single select because I'm only choosing out of a category of choices. And so I say, this person is a volunteer. So all these people in this table already are volunteers, right? Right. Uh, and I have pastors. And so uh, now I can say, okay, these people are volunteers. And then now I want to create even more records for the pastors that we're looking for. So, uh, we can take the pastor name field. Exactly. And I don't think we could have asked for a better base. This is such a fun, this is like <laughs> a perfect base. I agree with you. So, and then what do we do with this one? What do we do with pastor right. email? So now we just throw that directly into email. Boom. So we delete yeah. it? Do we just delete it? Yes, we can totally delete it now. Boom. And what we want to do, okay. Uh, and yeah, and call them pastors. And you, if if their name or like how everybody refers to them and everybody knows and they'll show up as Pastor Miller, Pastor Smith, or Pastor Gonzalez, that, that definitely makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise you can just um, put their, their actual name in there and uh, Aaron, we'll, we'll want to rename the primary field to to pe person, right? Just so we um, are consistent and, and like, and that happens all the time with bases. You're like, let me make a major change, and you forget that there are some other things that need to happen. Um, but so Anne says she's like, well, the pastors need to be associated with right. specific volunteers. And this is where um, databases come in and are just super gnarly um, because databases are really good at associating things with other things. Uh, so what Airtable can do, and this was actually a really hard concept for me to learn, is it can actually, uh, we can actually associate uh, people in this table with other people in this table. So mm -hmm. instead of pastor name, uh, let's create a, t a field next to it that is uh, a pastor, let me just call it pastor. And then we can link record, uh, link to another record, uh, because we want to. Whenever you want to relate something to something else, it's when you want to link something. Uh, and we actually just want to relate it to our people table. Um, and you'll see that it, it's it's there. And now we can link to people and uh, save it. And now when you have you, when you click on that record, you'll have a plus sign. 
And if you click the plus, you can see all of the different people that are there. Uh, one thing we can do that's even further, Aaron, tell me if I'm going too left here, is if I know that I only want to keep pastors here, I can create a pastor's view and then just use. So um, I want to come back to that later. I want to, we haven't introduced yeah. the concept of views and this table has a lot of work to do. Uh, uh, um, okay. So I want to kind of, let's, let's just, pre, let's associate this. So essentially if I'm understanding this correctly, when I click on pastor, I'm pulling up everybody. Right. Yeah. And so I know that. Amazing. Yeah. So I want to associate Smith to, to participant. So Smith, right. boom. Now I know that the right pastor for that participant is Pastor Smith. Uh, and exactly. then next, let me just, let me kind of, this one's Miller. There mm -hmm. we go. Smith. Right. And then this one, oh, I didn't catch it. Gonzalez. There we go. And now we've Perfect. associated each pastor uh, uh, um, to the right person when they're a volunteer. So the expectation is that when you're in a volunteer, you have a pastor. Exactly. Cool. Um, and then instead of pastor name, we can go ahead and uh, create a pastor and change that to pastor email. So we don't, so we're not losing what Anne had originally, which I think is like really necessary because maybe if she wanted to um, send an email to the pastor, she could easily do that. So instead of email, now that we already have the pastor's emails in there, there's no sense in us um, rewriting that out again, because that's how we end up with stale data. So instead we can use uh, the lookup function with uh, Aaron's pulled up and now look up from the pastor field we have in there. So you say pastor, and then we can choose the field that we want to look up, which here we'll see all the fields in this table. We want to choose email and then uh, press save. And then yep. our pastor email will automatically come in, um, which is really helpful because if a pastor's email changes, I only have to change it in one place. I don't have to worry that it shows up in multiple places and now I have to change uh, the pastor's email as well. Obviously I picked the only one that isn't referenced. So let's say Pastor Miller, we see it here. And if I say Pastor Miller, you know, two is the new email, we see it instantly updates because we're referencing existing data. So I do wanna, Colleen had a great question around backups. So I do wanna just address yeah. this actually, like we're gonna do a lot of changes here and, and you can rest assured, this is a copy of your base and I'll share you the <laughs> link after, I'm not like messing in your base. You can always do backups, right? So you can take a snapshot, right? Before you start messing uh, uh, around. So take a snapshot, it's gonna go ahead and take a snapshot and then you could reference that snapshot create a copy so uh, uh you know before you do what we advocate which is blow up your base and redo all this stuff make a snapshot um okay one so one thing i like to do when I'm working with okay. copies is change the color so i know right. that um, i'm in a cop or i'm in a different base than the one i'm usually in and because i work in, i don't know i have so many different bases i just get scared <laughs> like <laughs> did i you do the same wrong place? So one thing I learned about working or one thing I realized joining Airtable is just the phenomenal amount of bases I am now involved in. Uh, uh, you know, when your business is Airtable, uh, uh, like, I, I don't think anyone runs more things on Airtable, obviously, than Airtable. So like colors and, and, and especially, I don't know, I, I, I really like these like light colors. I know they're like a pro feature that... A lot of people like dismiss, but I love the like nice little palette colors. Okay. Uh, uh, um. <laughs> the secret. Um, yeah, yeah. The secret between me and, and, the, and the audience. <laughs> um, okay. So, so, you know, okay. So we feel like we have a people, I want to kind of move along here. There's some stuff here. So there's team, mm -hmm. right? And then if I go to, let, let's, what, what is actually, you, you tell me what to do. What is, what yeah. is like your next kind of thought process here? Yeah, definitely go into teams. Let's, let's see what, what uh, we've got with teams. So cool. We've got two teams here. We've got the, the DR mission education. We have the Polish English conversation partners. This looks like an awesome organization. Um, and then we've got uh, some more information about uh, the team, which is exactly how you want to set up your uh, information. I want to mm -hmm. know that the people are on this team, and then I want to have more detailed information about uh, the team, including what type of team it is, where it is, um, you know, what status it might be. And then clearly I see here um, who the volunteers are. 
Right. Uh, so uh, that's that's really nice. Uh, it looks like uh, Anne's done something that I've done many times, which is uh, link records and then uh, delete the link and uh, the, uh, the, t the, yeah, the records. Uh, so, so we've got some tasks in there that might not be as um, as relevant anymore. So it's really just fine to get rid of them. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete this one. Yeah. Tasks per team. So when we set it, like when we come back to our apps and our little description here, we mentioned mm -hmm. projects. It feels like this is our project table, right? So we've got like, like right? Like it feels like we have the mission type, the location. This is like that project has a start date and end date. Yeah. You know, I think Anne says that this is correct. So. What, would you advocate for changing the name of this table? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's up to, yeah, I think, I think so. It makes it a little bit more clear. Uh, teams, we could easily get confused with the people object or as projects we have. Projects I like because you kind of think that it has a, a defined beginning and end, uh, which right. helps, whereas teams could be like a persistent, okay, well, this person's on the development team, this person's on the finance team. Uh, and that seems more like a state versus um, an actual time bound thing. Uh, one thing I'll say also is that uh, there, uh, Airtable uh, helps you out to for you to understand uh, how to like how fields work. But I am also I also have this as well where I, the notes and attachments fields, the default fields that come with <laughs> Airtable, uh, and they just hang around. I see this in all, in all my customer bases. They hang around. They're like, well, we didn't want to delete them, but you can totally just take those out if they're not really applicable to what you're doing right now to just give yourself a, a cleaner way of looking at stuff. So already we haven't really done any linking. Uh, all we did was uh, prune this table a little bit to get a, a nice view that uh, a project, mm -hmm. it has a project type or a team type. It's got a location, it has a start and end date, and it also has a status. Uh, and then uh, certain volunteers are associated with each project okay. or each trip or whatever it might be. Yeah. So if I'm kind of thinking about this, you know, um, I've got my people, my people are a list of volunteers. I've got pastors, maybe I've got HR, like whatever contacts or people go into people projects are things that involve people. Like right now we're calling it volunteers. Uh, so I imagine we're only linking to that volunteers, uh, subset. So I think this is actually a good time to, before we go on to task, I want to, want to, with your help, introduce two concepts. Um, okay. you know, what if I get you know, before you mentioned like 50 people or a hundred pastors, how do I go yeah. about organizing, you know, this table and then the projects table and maybe linking only to a subset. And then I think we can go on to like tasks and build out the rest of the base uh, because tasks, yeah. we're going to have like each project has multiple tasks. So we're going to end up with like those very large base. Yeah. Um, so what we're having mostly right now, uh, what I learned was a database schema long after I ended up playing an Airtable. But right now, most of our conversation has been on what, how should I configure my tables and my links, uh, which is the fundamentals. And uh, to be successful in Airtable, something that you do want to know backwards and forwards and uh, kind of like be curious about and understand like, how, like what type of relationship it is. I think that'll get you farther than anything else. Everything else is icing and it's really pretty icing and it's a lot of fun um, and it really helps when it comes to collaboration um, as well as like power. Uh, but I would say where, we're, where we were, have been focusing is on um, the fundamentals uh, to make Airtable the most powerful um, tool for the job that you're doing. Right. Um, then moving forward, I would say that uh, the next the next like layer on the cake, if we're talking about a very delicious cake here, um, mm. is okay. I got it all structured in the way that it should be. Now, how does my volunteer coordinator look at it versus my pastor outreach person look at it? Right. Uh, and I don't want it to be so cluttered that someone says, okay, there's too much here and I'm overwhelmed. Uh, right. So you're like, okay, I've got it functioning in the way I want. Now, how do I get people to use it? So this is more the usability and user interface uh, start of it. And I might've been a little bold in that assumption and that user interface is more important than structure. I think they're both equally important, but um, I, I, that's, how, that's how I think of the concepts. And so, yeah, I just want to spend a, I want to, I think so much of Airtable or moving any, not moving, but like introducing any tool is if I get into a, that tool and I'm just like overwhelmed with things, right. And I'm just like, oh my God, like, why is this blank? You know what I mean? Like, why is this, this have no linked record? What am I looking at? 
So I do think like what we're going to talk about here is, is not only important from like a usability standpoint, but also from a, uh, I want people to use this. And so I can't necessarily yeah. overwhelm them with things like even me, sometimes will someone will send, send me a base and it's just got so much, so much in it. And I don't know where to start that I, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of miss it. So, uh, um, so Anne mentioned that there's only two people using the base, so we'll give you the basics of it. And then uh, 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 let's just, I think, create a few. And, and the reason I think it's important is because it'll also explain why we don't want these three different tables for different types. So Absolutely. with that introduction, what are we, what are, what have we been hinting at for a little bit here? Uh, Mikhail. We've been hitting at people's <laughs> news. Uh, yeah. that, that's what we, and, and, and all those little fun buttons at the top that we haven't touched right. yet, how we can, we can use that to make this a better uh, user interface. And I, and Aaron, I think you were spot on the money. Uh, I've myself included, I've seen so many people where their bases end up being extensions of their brains and their brains only. And they're the wizard that can make it through the maze. And you definitely want to be able to um, op let some send the link to somebody, open it, have them open it up, and then them understand exactly what's going on here. Right. Um, so uh, to make this a little bit more uh, understandable about what we're looking at here, what I think we could do is uh, let's, what I like to do, Aaron, is actually go to hide fields and hide all the fields. Uh, to me, it's like get everything out the way, and then let me think about what I want to show. Um, so, right. I, so my initial view is going to be: uh, I want to know the email or, or the type of person, how I can contact, and what type of person they are. Um, and then uh, maybe that's it for now. And then I'll I'll group it by the type of person it is. Uh, then I'll go ahead. And or yeah, exactly. But exactly. Then I'll go ahead and name my view, which uh, is to me a best practice, no matter what you're doing, uh, is to say this is all people. Uh, and I just like you. You always want to have like an all view, so you right. know everyone who's in there. But the reason that we hate all those other fields is because, uh, as as Aaron said, uh, pastors don't have uh, that pastor email or that pastor uh, that, that's specifically for volunteers. So uh, showing that and it being empty makes it a little bit uh, confusing to read. Right. Uh, so then I'll go ahead and create another view uh, for volunteer. Um, that I was renaming this, I'm, I'm going to do your trick, hide all. Yeah. What do we think is uh, about email? Then, yeah, email. Uh, we know they're volunteers, but if you want to, you can say type. Uh, and we can do pastor and pastor email since we know every volunteer is right. a pastor. Um, and we can also put team because we know that um, volunteers will be on teams. Right. So and let's then go you're going for it. Then we want to filter out. Yeah. Yeah. So filter out anyone who. So only keep type as volunteer. There we go. All right. Exactly. Exactly. So now we've got a really clean um, understanding of who are the volunteers and what teams they're on. And we can go even further if we wanted to and uh, group by project or group by team. So then we can see uh, who belongs to which. Uh, for right now, this is really clean, but it can get a little messy if uh, multiple volunteer or uh, volunteers on multiple projects. But right now, uh, this is a really great way to say, okay, I'm really focusing on the Dominican Republic right now. Let me collapse Poland, or I'm really focused, or vice versa. Um, right. So now we've got uh, we go back to our view switcher. We've got two views uh, that give us an idea of um, the people and the all the people that we're tracking in the space, as well as the uh, the volunteers that we'd like. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> So I think with that that like introduction of views, it kind of explains why, you know, different tables shouldn't be used for subsets of information that you're looking for, right? So mm -hmm. let's say tasks yeah. per team. Well, you can just have a list of tasks associated to the right team, pull in that team information, and then say well, like, well, one of my views is tasks per team. Am I kind of saying that right? Am I viewing, am I viewing it exactly. right? Pun intended. It <laughs> I think that it, it definitely goes back to what we were talking about with why I wouldn't create a table for why we wouldn't create a table for pastors and people. They're both the same. They're both the same type of object. We're going to be capturing the same thing about them. All of these right. tasks are going to have status. All of these tasks are going to have a due date. All of these tasks are going to be assigned to a volunteer. Maybe. Uh, and what we'll want to do is make sure. Uh, and so what we can do is um, create another field that lets us know which. Uh, type of task this is or which ta task this right. person is uh, associated with. Okay. So exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, like, it sounds like we can delete three out of the four, but I want to, I want to kind of figure out like, what is, what, when you think of a task table, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got 
this one, which has a primary field that has the, like this one feels the right one for me. So we've got task one, task two, task mm -hmm. three due dates. So we can look into that a little bit. Uh, yeah. Field five, which if I click on it, comes from is people. So this is might be, yeah. what would you rename this to? Volunteer? Uh, volunteers. Yeah, volunteers. Yeah. Great. Or you can make it, you could keep it singular if only one person's gonna be assigned to one task. Okay, so it seems like it, it can not, only be, yeah. So it, it, it is a, it is yeah, we're currently, yeah, let's take it so it's called volunteer. Uh, start date that come that's a lookup coming from volunteer Which is that doesn't lookup. feel right so let's go back into p do you agree that doesn't feel right to you yeah it, it yeah it looks like it might be coming from project it might be looked up from project and volunteer so okay so we have so maybe maybe do you want to do we need to keep start date and end date feels like things we should have at the project level unless these well, are volunteer start and end dates start and end date. i wonder if it's it's that because um they're they're volunteer based on certain projects but right uh, and and did say that volunteers can be on multiple projects so for okay, right cool. now okay. i would have to get rid of those uh but i think that uh she she does what uh happens in a basis where you have a lot of tables is you're looking up to look up from somewhere else right um, okay so so how do you how, how do we how do we clean this up? What do you, what are your yeah. thoughts here? I actually would uh, start from scratch. Start from uh, scratch. I would yeah oh. I would take a task table and uh, all yeah all good I would and then I would just make fields for this. That's actually how I build an air table. Actually, to be quite honest, <laughs> is I'll start from scratch and I'll delete the first three the first three fields. Um, I need a I need a script to do that for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, I'll start making fields of what I know I need to track already, even if I don't know what field type I want them to be yet. So okay. I know that I want um, a volunteer to be associated with each task. I know I want to start an end date. Um, for a task, I probably know that I want a status too. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep you know train of thought. Keep keep adding. So you've got volunteer, yeah. which we won't we don't necessarily know what the, the record, the field type is, status, what else What else are we thinking? If we maybe go back here. Uh, like our... Yeah, start and end date for sure. So yeah, start date. Okay. End, and date. end date. And then okay. um, as Anne said, uh, she's at a really good point here. There are tasks for, um, there are tasks for projects and there are tasks for people in terms of, it sounds like, um, up for in order for a person to be cleared for a project to work on, they might need to complete some tasks, right? Right. And then when they get assigned to the project, they'll have project related tasks. Right. Um, so there are a couple of ways we can skin that cat. Uh, so <laughs> isn't there always uh, a couple is, ways we can skim the cat and that's like the big problem? Yeah, I think because one of the things that people people kind of uh, kind of say, well, these are the projects that I've always had. Um, and these are like the only three projects that exist when there actually might be a project that's called intake and uh, right. the task might be really do uh, intake for that specific person. Uh, right. And that's where we get a, a little, a little fun there. Um, so, uh, right, right. I want, I would definitely want a, a project uh, field here as well. Um, so, pro so linking to the right project and what you're saying is that onboarding a volunteer. So what, what potentially uh, you can view onboarding a vol like volunteer based tasks as a project, mm -hmm. but you can exactly. also differentiate it at the task level. Is this a task related to a project? Is this related to a person? And essentially based on whether or not there's a linked record, that's how you differentiate those two. Is that right? Am I kind of saying that right? Or would you view that differently? Um, I'm actually not sure. I'm thinking about how it's going to shake out. Uh, Cause we're going <laughs> to probably run into my favorite, my favorite thing, which is a junction table. Uh, which is like really it's great it, it serves a lot of purposes but it's like just a really annoying concept right um, i think i think so for the purposes of simplicity uh let's assume that a prod onboarding could be a project 
Yeah. Right. Totally. I think that's that's the relatively for Anne's use case, which is a small team. Uh, that's how I would recommend. Would you do that as well? And, and I think we're kind of talking uh, uh, um, in in the cloud. So let's build this out. And maybe when we get there, we're like, okay, we need a junction table. So yes. Anne will present both of you. <laughs> which is which is how it normally goes. You'd be like, right. I thought I could do it, but whatever. And then one field that I'll put in here um, because Anne mentioned it is I'll, I actually might make a checkbox field for template. Uh, <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll do that because it sounds like the tasks are mainly the same depending on what type of project it is. Uh, and so I can, you know, copy and reuse them going forward, but I'll want to create a template view um, of those right. tasks. Uh, and they might have start dates, they might have end dates, they might not, uh, but it's just nice to have the name in there. Uh, so then let's go, oh, and then type, type would be good, right? Let's just put type in there right now and then we might be able to get rid of it later cool um so okay. let's go ahead and look at task due dates of vol uh per per volunteer wait, wait say that again i lost you let's look at the, the tables i want to start th looking about the oh, tables okay. and then bringing right. their stuff in there um can you can you also look at the task per team and the task per volunteer as well so welcome email uh -huh. Yeah. So this this seems like onboarding for specific participants. Yep, totally. So I would, and then this seems like a per team. Uh, right. Yeah. I think at this level, we could just create these as projects. So let's say there's like team level things we need to do and then volunteer level things we need to do. We'll assume that they're always like one project. So, you know, for instance, this would be onboard this team. And then mm -hmm. onboard this volunteer, each one of those is a project. Would that make sense to you? Can you go back to task per team? Yeah. So I get to notify host of team composition, provide Zoom link to participants, introduce team to hosts and mail postcards. Got it. Okay. So if, if I'm, if, okay. Uh, yeah, let's just throw them all on the task table and then we'll see how they shake out. <laughs> So I, Sorry. I think, I think I just, no, no, I think this is one of the, I think these people have this assumption that when you are an Airtable user, that's, that uses Airtable a lot, you have this like very narrow view of what the base is going to look like at the end, but know that even folks like, like you, like myself, like we, we play around with it and, and we do base yeah. structure and then we also evolve, right? So the base we're going to end up with today as, and as you play around with it, you can kind of evolve from here. So uh, it's yeah. never set in stone. So we're going to, I'm just copy and pasting. That was from the tasks per team. So I can delete this table, right? Yeah. Okay. Task per volunteer. These ones yeah. as well? Yeah. Boom. Let's throw them in. Let's throw them in. Boom. Cool. And then um, this one, table one, we can delete. Yeah. Oh, look how much, like we're getting so clean here. Yeah, okay. it's fun, right? Okay. Past due dates for volunteer, per volunteer. Aha. Okay. So we've got participant tests, test 2020, 20, 11, 18, Dominican Republic. So basically. So this looks yeah. like taking the name. Love it. And then the team. Mm -hmm. So this, this looks like an attempt at a junction table, but it sounds like we don't necessarily need this right now. Like this almost yeah. tells us. So uh, let's put in task one, task two, task three in the team table. I mean, sorry, in the task table. <laughs> as as records, right? Actual tasks, mm -hmm. as records. And actually, uh, can you throw, can copy that and paste that three times too? or twi now twice since we already have it in there. Perfect. Cool, okay. Cool. All and right. then, um, and now uh, what, we're, what we're trying to mimic is, and I actually see this a lot in Airtable, um, and it's something that happens with spreadsheets is that um, you, uh, you, teams build out specific fields that actually depending like on a more optimal structure 
Uh, again, as we saw with uh, people, you only need one field for email or you only need one field for start date or and one right. field for end date. Uh, and then we need to figure out how can you differentiate the task record by record. So if right. we look back in task due dates, you'll see uh, we've got uh, task one, task two, task three is different fields, uh, but we actually right. might want them as, uh, different records right. uh, that right. all have a start and date. Yeah. Which is what we have here. Like we have task one and then for each yeah. one, instead of having them as, as what people would refer to as columns, what we call fields, we're essentially yeah. going to say, let's figure out the start date and end date for each one of these based off of potentially the project due date. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so do you feel, we... yeah, go ahead. No, please. No, my thing was just to tell you to go ahead. That was literally my, oh. my. <laughs> Yeah, so now we can start kind of like throwing in our field, like what we need uh, in right. this field. So we already have a list of volunteers. So let's go ahead and grab volunteers. Um, and one thing I alluded to earlier, um, so we can go and link to the volunteers, right? We want to relate it to people. Um, one other thing that I, we alluded to earlier was that you can actually limit uh, even more. So even though we call that table people, we don't have to say, well, now you have to select all the people on that table. Uh, we can limit the record selection to a view. And because we have uh, a view called volunteers, we can click that um, and save it. And now when we try to add a, uh, a person, all we get is volunteers instead of getting volunteers and pasters. And so it's a, it's a nice UI or, or user experience layer where we're removing some of the clutter, even though we're putting the kitchen sink in. Um, so we're, we're using it contextually. Yeah. So um, let me know in the, so, in the chat. I'm, I'm just curious. We both remember days before this was a thing, right? Which is like relatively recent, <laughs> right? Like I now we yeah. just assume that this has always been a thing, right? So let me know in the chat, like, were you an Airtable user before this existed? Or did you even not know about it? Let me know in the chat. I'm just always curious of like, this This for us was, I remember like, God sent oh, big, so it was like, oh uh, yeah, yeah, we've been waiting this for years. Okay, so now- yeah, when people talk about creating your own software, this is the part where that gets real. Because like before it's like, okay, now I'm just making a database. I made it look really pretty. I right. put some views on it, but now you're actually saying, no, in this situation, in this scenario where I want to do this thing, I want to call up this class of data, or I want to call up this, this class of information. And you're, you're able to have, we're giving you like, not me, cause I don't put this product. I just use it. Um, they're, <laughs> they're giving you this, this level of, uh, of control, uh, that is comparable to someone building that or coding that in software. Um, so I think like that's where that where Airtable, those little nuances that you know you can't put in a in a one hour and one on one training, that's where you start to see it actually right. really happen. Totally. Um, so we've got a mix. We've got one person uh, who has remembers a day before and then everybody else who just learned about it. So that's great. Uh, right. cool. So can I show I imagine do I go ahead and assign volunteers to these different So one uh, thing projects? that we did one thing that we did that I don't want to lose is that template, that template right. field. So like pull that, te pull a template all the way up to the first, the first field. So we kind of have it uh, right next to the names and let's call uh, rows one records, one through 13, uh, one through 12 templates, right? Um, and so depending on um, you know, like whatever task one's actual name is, like this is what we can like copy and paste from or um, in more advanced implementations run a script from or something like that. Right. Uh, and we'll always have that. And a good way to kind of differentiate that I like to is always a group uh, and then eventually filter it out. Right. Um, so let, I'll do that, that at the end. I think we'll create a few views. Like I'm curious, okay, so how do you go, like what, how do we go about changing these into the right field types? Yeah, let's do that. So um, then go ahead and just start clicking the down arrow. Um, a status is always going to have, um, like you're always gonna to wanna to choose from a choice of options. And so a status was always gonna be a single select text. Uh, and the reason you want it to be single instead of multiple is it's confusing when something has more and more than one right. status. Um, and it's it's an easy way to bring clarity. And if there is a an exception, uh, that's what the record comments are for or a notes field or something like right. that. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and like assign random ones here. Yeah, that, sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Just so we have some color. Boom. Okay, cool. All right. Start date, and then, end date. Uh, start. 
are always gonna be dates. Dates. Pro tip: you can search. Love that. You know, same thing for end date. Date. Okay, and then projects. Is we already have like this is why it's so good to kind of like name things very simply. Now we know we have a project table. We can go ahead and uh, name it project. Uh, Link it to projects. Cool. Right. Okay. So let's, do you want to kind of maybe tag a few of these? So folk, like, I think the question, for, you know, uh, 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 how to say like the next question is like, okay, well, th this is a different type of project than this one, than this one. Yep. Right. So how? Yeah. that's like, maybe we want to finish type and then go into that. No, do you want yes, to go into and, let's let's yes and and there's a <laughs> there's again and a, a couple of ways to do this right I was thinking we can have a set of template projects instead of a set and then it kind of feeds down through whatever we're doing because we have okay. projects that obviously that makes sense tasks or tasks. Okay. Um, that could be helpful uh, I don't know but it, it really depends um, so uh, I'm actually gonna put throw that back on you what do you what do you think there I think I think you know, we, we've done a lot in this base. Let's try to do the, the, the simple base structure, right? Okay. Imagining that this is everything and then talking about, okay, well, assuming we have this structure, let's add one project that's a new type and see how the mechanics are of that. I think um, that's cool. And we can go from there. Yeah. So let's uh, like link it to an existing project, right? Notify host of team composition. Uh, let's do it for the DR. Um, and let's do that all the way down to email to task three. Right. And then uh, maybe we can use that type field to differentiate, you know, this is um, an onboarding versus this is right. a project project specific task. And for that, you're also going to want a single select. And then we said, uh, yeah, just project. Or it might be participant or volunteer related, or is that onboarding? Yeah. That's team onboarding. So maybe we call this team onboarding. Yeah, onboarding, project execution, or and then volunteer onboarding yeah. or something. Uh, volunteer onboarding. Okay, cool. So yeah. got task type. So this is team onboarding until. Task three, we've got volunteer onboarding until task nine. There we go. And then task one through three is, is project. Boom. Right. Awesome. Cool. Um, All right. Okay. So now we can do some lovely grouping. Yeah. Let's. What would you group by? So you group by project first, and then by type. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. We had a nice uh, cascade. Something, something about great minds thinking alike. I love uh, grouping. It's a particular table. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like, it's so one... hard. It's it's hard for me not to do the things you're about to say because like I'm like oh yeah no we got to move this instinctively <laughs> we can hide this field yeah. you know what I mean you so like. Said. And so what, what we're saying here is that grouping um, makes it a really nice presentation of information, but it also makes things redundant. If I'm grouping right. by the type, I don't need to see the type anymore. I can just hide it because it's already shown um, in the left in the, the, where the group layer is. And the same thing with the project. Uh, and then so now we've got team onboarding, notify host, and now I can have a start date and an end date um, for this. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I do, I know you have like, a script for based on the end date to count back the start date. I don't think we'll have time because I'm just kind of, yeah. it's an hour. So I think let's, let's kind of yeah. end, end, end here. And what, what I think we should do is at a start date, at an end date, and maybe we just show Gantt as a way to see both, uh, yeah. both project and a uh, 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 task. Um, and I think we'll, that'll be the base structure. And just as an example, do you, do you agree with that? And I think we yeah. will bring you back on to, once we know how to <laughs> write scripts starting tomorrow, uh, uh, so quick shout out to you. 
twitch.tv slash Airtable TV, where we're going to learn how to That's write scripts tomorrow. I can't, I can't write, a, I don't know how to write scripts. I know you're the expert, but. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yet. You got this. Yet. All right. Now there are multiple experts at Airtable. <laughs> uh, cool. So. I can't wait to see tomorrow. Oh man, it's going to be so much So fun. here we can, we can throw in, um, yeah, so here's where I'm hoping to calculate the task dates, based, due dates based on the project dates. Yeah. Um, so, and what we were kind of mentioning is, is we're going to show you what it looks like in, um, in the Gantt chart, and that'll give you some more flexibility on, on, on what you want to do. Um, so right now, Aaron, how do you want to just fill in the date, just like today? Yeah, so so I think, you know, uh, simply, let, yeah, let's just fill these start date and due date. So let's assume, quick pro tip, if you ever, I do this a lot, so you just pull down and then so it, i gotta make it look nice on the gantt you know oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, this is my job i make i make, gotcha. <laughs> I make things yeah, I look good on the up. gantt <laughs> this is um okay let's maybe we just scope it to team onboarding so folks get an example yeah um cool and then i imagine that the due date, you also want to know that at the task level, the project due date. So yeah. I'm just going to quickly add project due date. And this is coming from projects end date save. Okay. So let's go ahead and yeah, just quickly, quickly talk me through, yeah. uh, <laughs> the Gantt app. Yeah. So if you open up the app, <laughs> which I'm, I'm like, I'm app like almost now. there. I'm like, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll install the app and uh, we'll go to our marketplace. And what we can do is uh, Gantt is one of our top blocks. So we'll click Gantt and we got to like fake. I don't know where it is. I'm like, where, oh, where yeah. is this Gantt app you're talking about? Yeah, there you go. And you'll get a nice little overview of like what you can do and then you can install it on your base. Uh, then we can go ahead and uh, Airtable will try to auto automatically infer what you're trying to do. Um, so here uh, we've got some tasks with some dates in there. Uh, it's pulling mm -hmm. from the grid view. We've got we name start and end date. Airtable looks for that, so it automatically puts them in there. And then uh, we throw a nice uh, label on them if we'd like. Um, we can group them by the task or by the project if we'd like it, or not task um, by the, the the project if we'd like. Um, right. And now you can see um, how we can move them back and forth on the Gantt chart and, and see them, um, how they all cascade and, and start together. So if I wanted to make um, notify host uh, a little bit uh, longer, I could. Uh, one thing that we don't have on here uh, are dependencies and we can do that mm -hmm. uh, with linked records again. Uh, and that way, if I had a dependency, if I actually moved notify host, it would move my entire cascade, my entire right. uh, task tree which would uh, be more in line with what we're trying to do. Um, so yeah, this is a, a little bit of Gantt. Uh, it's, a, it's a great app uh, that is super powerful. Um, I can zoom in and out by quarter. I can, I can download this. I can make things specific colors. Uh, so if I wanted to see what are all of the at-risk apps, or sorry, tasks, I could go yeah. ahead and um, do by specific color or something like that. Um, but once you get it on here, uh, you're able to uh, quickly see everything in context and move it around. Um, so yeah, super powerful app here. Yeah. So what I would recommend and is like, you, like you, you know what the due date is, let's say the project due date is December 7th. You can kind of from there move your different tasks related to that project. So right now we're in Dominican Republic to not overlap and make sure that you have the time uh, uh, um, so if you have 40 projects, uh, and you need to kind of calculate back, uh, I will add a script into the base, which lets you based on, uh, the, the due date of the project calculate back. It was written by none other than Victoria. So, you know, both know that it's, it works and that it's quality, uh, uh, because we have to kind of set a due date and then work backwards across each task. Uh, to be able to calculate. Uh, um, so this was one workaround. We'll add a script into the base. And I will, on the YouTube link, I will include uh, the base. 
So actually I can give you a I can I can just put it here. Yeah, I can just I can give you the share link now. And this will have the the script itself as well. Uh here we go. Private there we go. So don't don't copy it now. Just keep that link. And uh I'll have the script. Actually I can just copy paste it now. I have it right here. It's a little bit of, of uh of code it's, it's got some comments in there um so aaron this one's an automation one. Oh, it's an automation it's, one okay so wh yeah. what is it so i can just include it anyway so i'll just include it yeah scripting install so you need to add it as part of an automation so it's when you create a project or when you check a box what is the yeah when you check a box uh create the template list of of tasks that are going to be associated with that project and then uh, the work back, but you definitely need a little bit more structure in here at like uh, the templated list of all the tasks uh, right. and including how long a task you expect a task to take. So if you expect a task to take five days, uh, you're going to want to have a field that says a uh, task duration. Right. Uh, and then uh, this, uh, this uh, script will uh, not only uh, create all of those tasks, then also fill in the start and end dates on um, any dependencies that you might have already added in your template. Uh, it is super powerful. It's also, you know, one of those steps that's just uh, uh, part of Airtable's uh, non-prescriptiveness, right? Because it, we're, right. we're a, a platform and not a project management um, software. It's not one of those things that comes out of the box, but it is one of the things you can achieve. Uh, and a really fun way to learn some, uh, a new, a new language uh, and learn, alert, basically learn a new way to build formulas that are much more powerful than what you can, can you do in a, in a, a field. Yeah, um, I there's think we're also gonna to, uh, we're gonna have to bring you back on to show us how to write that script. I think that's actually like a good. Uh, 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 uh. So I also need to learn scripting. So folks, <laughs> folks in the chat are saying they need to learn scripting. Uh, we need to learn. We need to get to Victoria level in terms of scripting. That's that's you, maybe you a year. Got locked out of New York <laughs> during during <laughs> COVID, <laughs> not being able to go outside your apartment. And maybe it's a good time to learn. The only good thing of 2020, <laughs> learning how to write JavaScript <laughs> in Airtable. Uh, uh, yeah, um, but it is a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, I so I shared the base. I hope I hope this was useful to folks. Uh, yeah. Let me know in the chat if these kinds of... Uh, so this is one weird thing I think about these streams is I know Victoria enjoyed building that base. I know I enjoyed building <laughs> the base. I don't know if like live base building is that much fun to other people. It seems like it's fun enough to you and in, in, in folks in the chat. So that means a lot. I know that there's a small slice of the world who enjoys seeing others build bases. And what's really fun about this is had this been just me, I would have probably structured this differently. Right. Yeah. That's a fun part of like, uh, uh, I would uh, definitely want to talk to you about how you, how you structure it. Um, I think, you know, I think you work more with folks who have this concept of recurrence Whereas yeah. I don't, right? So for me, usually a project has this like, uh, 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 you know, like net green type of work we need to do. And mm -hmm. I work much less myself and generally with like, I need to remember to do these eight things. Primarily because this is called automate all the things. So if I'm doing the same thing over and over, I'm going to go ahead and learn how to not do it and like automate that work. But I do understand that like some of this is like shoot the image and do that. It's just that type of work that's always recurring. Um, also, I think the other difference is I don't work with such complex use cases. So I rarely see past the tip of my nose, if that's an expression in English, right? In French, you can say like only have view until the end of your nose. So you're never... I think, I think that's an expression, yeah. Is it? I don't know. So I never I, kind of think, think of like what happens if a project is volunteer based or whatever, I kind of just, I'll be like, Oh, that's a problem for future or whatever. That's where I'm, I'm more happy on the education side than on the, I guess on the, on the CSM <laughs> side. Cause, cause ultimately you're always kind of surfacing new problems, but, uh, um, Oh, wait, wait, we forgot the most important part. Wait, wait, wait. we built the base. So uh. now we get to air horns. All right, confetti. <laughs> uh, so this is. <laughs> oh boy. 
Um, awesome. So with, I'm going to kind of go back into, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I've shared the base. Let's go. Uh, this is a lot uh, better. Yeah, this was so much fun. I, I hope folks in the chat enjoyed this as much as we did. Uh, you know, I can't say thanks enough for joining, for taking the time to uh, uh, build live with us. And um, yeah, let us know in the chat if you'd like to join more live base building. Uh, uh, you know, I'd love to make this more of a recurring thing where folks submit their bases, we go through them, we add automations, we add apps, uh, we do some cool stuff. I feel like we were very much on the base design. How was your, how was the first, how did it feel as the first automate all the things guest? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, this is um, never, it, I, first time, first time. This is super fun. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this. And I think that like fundamentals help when it comes to automation. I mean, completely there, right. everything when it comes to automation and putting multiple layers on top of this. So in order for us to get the structure right, um, and, and make it repeatable and make it um, so that, you know, not only can you automate this, but, uh, you know, you can set dependencies or you can not only automate the um, the calculation of dates, but then also send someone a reminder because it's structured in a way where that's possible. Um, I, the, the foundation and fundamentals of base structure are so important. So sometimes you do have to go back to basics, but it's incredible and, and fun to, to do that. And, uh, you know, to me, it's like, again, uh, what did I said, business Tetris, and then like untying a knot, um, yeah. and that's just how I look at my job. You know, how I look at yeah. Airtable. It's fun. I think we could spend like another hour, hour and a half, being like, okay, we need to put in this automation. What if it's recurring? What if it's not? We're like, and and just really kind of get to something. Uh, but someone in the chat has six kids, and you need to get back to not neglecting them. <laughs> so, so I think that's a that's a really Thank good you. place. I I feel both. Uh, uh, a lot of joy for, for doing this webinar. Now I also feel bad because six, six kids apparently might have been neglected while we were doing this. Uh, so <laughs> I think I think it's time we end it uh, uh, and give those kids back their parents. So I you know really enjoyed this, folks. If 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 you enjoy this, you know join twitch.tv slash automate all the things TV. You'll get a notification every time we go live. I'd love love to have you back, Victoria, and do more live base building. Uh, 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 and yeah, really enjoyed doing this. So thank you awesome. so, so much. Thank you everyone. This was a lot of fun and uh, all the comments, uh, were, were really fun to watch and understand where everyone's coming from and, and how they think. So cool. All right. With that, uh, automate all the things out, enjoy, and, uh, we'll talk soon. Bye Victoria. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>